Hello, folks and goats. My name is Griffin. Welcome back to the Command Valley for the beginning of our Commander 2021 Upgrade Guides. Going by the order of which these were released, I will be covering the Lorehold Legacies Upgrade Deck featuring Osgir the Reconstructor as the Commander. Before we begin, I just wanted to mention that this episode and this podcast is brought to you by Game Grid. If you are looking for any of the cards in this deck or to pre-order the whole deck itself, head on over to GameGrid's website in the show notes below this video to order those cards. Helps us out and also helps out our favorite game store. Another reminder that the best way to support us is directly through patreon.com slash commandvalley. If you have a couple of minutes, consider going over there and checking out our tiers. There's exclusive benefits for our patrons, including merch, access to our Discord, playing games with the Command Valley, tons of cool stuff, so go on and check it out. All right, if this is your first time for one of our deck upgrade guides, let me quickly go through what we do. With a budget of $20, we take out cards we think aren't really good in this deck and put in cards that we feel would serve the deck even better. Today, I have taken out 12 cards and put in 12 cards for just $20. So if you want to get these cards again, Game Grips website, show notes below, you know where to go. So let me first begin by reading who the commander for Lorehold Legacies is. We've got Osgir, the Reconstructor, who's two red-white for a 4-4 legendary creature giant artificer. He's got Vigilance, and for one generic, you can sacrifice an artifact. Target creature you control gets plus two, plus zero until end of turn. Additionally, you can pay X and tap, exile an artifact card with mana value X from your graveyard, create two tokens that are copies of the exiled card, activate only as a sorcery. This deck is super exciting. It's a Boris deck that does not care about combat. I'm sure you've already heard the excitement for this. Being able to create copies of artifacts from your graveyard is extremely powerful, and they've shown that by the cards that they've put in this deck. However, there are some I feel like are lackluster to the strategy of this deck, and those are the ones we're taking out. I just want to preface before I read the cards that I've put in and the ones I've taken out that I am not claiming that these cards are the worst for this deck and have to be taken out every single time, nor am I saying that the 12 cards I've put in are the best. Simply the choice that I have made for this deck that you can go off of if you're looking to upgrade this deck. Think of it like Google Maps. Google Maps can tell you what to do, but sometimes you know better than Google Maps. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, quickly going through the cards I've taken out of this deck. First off, Sanctum Gargoyle. A flying 2-3 gargoyle that is an artifact, and when it ETBs, you can return target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. Pretty lackluster for 4 mana. It is an artifact, but there are better choices. Dig Sight Engineer is 2 and a white for a 3-3 artificer. Whenever you cast an artifact spell, you may pay 2 generic. If you do, create a 0-0 colorless construct artifact creature token with... This creature gets plus one plus one for each artifact you control. Definitely a pretty powerful effect. I wish that this was an artifact creature so I could take advantage of that ability, but since it's not, not really loving this card. Helkai Engineer is a seven mana five five dragon and, and for one in a red, it gets plus X plus zero until end of turn where X is the number of artifacts you control. Just a big beating dragon. I'm not a huge fan of this. I'd rather put in artifact cards and take out ones that aren't artifacts like this dragon. Additionally, Horde Smelter Dragon is 4 red red for a 5 5 flying dragon, and for 3 and a red, you can destroy target artifact. And Horde Smelter Dragon gets plus X plus O until end of turn where X is that artifact's converted mana cost. Now, it does have artifact removal on it. I just don't know if I want to pay 6 mana plus 4 every time I want to blow up an artifact just to get this ability. You can target your own so you can fuel Osgear's ability, but he can already do that himself for one generic. So sorry, Dargans, you're gonna have to go. Combustible Gear Hulk is four red red for a six six construct with first strike. When he ETBs, target opponent may have you draw three cards. If that player doesn't, put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard. Then Combustible Gear Hulk deals damage to that player equal to the total converted mana cost of those cards. Now this is one that was probably hardest to take out. I could definitely see the argument to keeping Combustible Gear Hulk in here, especially because you can get token copies of Combustible Gear Hulk. It has the potential to do a lot of damage or draw you a lot of cards. I just don't think it's that good to keep in this deck and pay six mana to make token copies of. But again, I can see the argument for why it could be good. But for now, we're taking it out. Mycosynth Wellspring is too generic for an artifact. When it ETBs or is put into a graveyard, you may search your library for a basic land, reveal it, and put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. Doesn't give you any mana ramp. Too generic artifact. I don't want to copy this. Taking it out. Key to the City is a 2 mana artifact that can tap to discard a card, up to 1 target creature can't be blocked this turn, and whenever Key to the City becomes untapped you may pay 2 if you do draw a card. 
Has some potential to draw you some cards, get some damage in, but I'm not super feeling this. I've got some better artifacts we can put in here. Quicksmith Genius is 2 in a red for a 3-2 human artificer, and when an artifact you control ETBs, you may discard a card if you do draw a card. It's not an artifact, and even if he was an artifact, I don't think I'd put this in this deck. I don't love rummaging. I'd rather just get something that gives me card advantage, which you can find in red, I promise. Unstable Obelisk is 3 generic for an artifact that taps for colorless, and for 7 in tap, sacrifice Unstable Obelisk and destroy target permanent. A really generic mana rock that has the ability to blow up a permanent for 7 mana, but again, that's a lot of mana. Rather be using that on some big powerful stuff. Additionally, Boros Locket is 3 generic for an artifact, tap for red or white, and for 4 Boros, sacrifice Boros Locket, draw 2 cards. Some pretty average mana ramp that can also draw you cards, but again, there's better things that we can put in here, so stay tuned. Jorkadeen the Prevailer is 3 red white for a 5 4 legendary creature human warrior with first strike and has metal craft. Creatures you control get plus 3 plus 0 as long as you control 3 or more artifacts. I don't think that the plus 3 plus 0 is really going to do anything for us. A lot of the artifacts we have in here are creatures, but I don't think we're going to win this game by aggroing out our opponents, even if we have that plus 3 plus 0 buff. Lastly, we have Pilgrim's Eye for 3 generic, a 1-1 flying Thopter, and when you ETB, search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, and put it into your hand, and shuffle your library. Again, not mana ramp. Don't love it when it's not mana ramp. Even in Boros, we can do better than that. Alright, so those are the cards that I am taking out of this deck, but now let's move on to the cards that I am putting in. And a reminder that all of these cards together are under $20, so if you want to get these cards, it will only cost you a 20 buck piece to make this deck even better. So starting us off, we have Goblin Welder for one generic, a 1-1 Goblin Artificer. Tap, choose target artifact to player controls, and target artifact in that player's graveyard. If both targets are still legal as this ability resolves, that player simultaneously sacrifices the artifact and returns the artifact card to the battlefield. This serves double in our deck because it counts as recursion, but it also fuels our graveyard, even though Ozgear himself can sacrifice artifacts to put them into the graveyard so that he can make token copies of them later, Goblin Welder is another redundancy to that ability that can also get us recursion. Ether Sworn Canonist is one in a white for a 2-2 artifact creature human cleric, each player who has cast a non-artifact spell this turn can't cast additional non-artifact spells. Since we are in Boris, we're going to be struggling a lot with our mana ramp, which means we're going to be making less plays than our opponents who are playing green. But the way that we can get around that is with Aether Sworn Canonist, because most of the cards that we have in this deck are artifact, we will be able to play multiple spells, while our opponents will not be able to play multiple spells. This does seem to conflict with monologue tax as well in this deck, however, I'm just going to say it now, monologue tax isn't that good. Moving on, we have Goblin Engineer for 1 and a red. We have a 1-2 Goblin Artificer. When he ETBs, you may search your library for an artifact card and put it into your graveyard, then shuffle your library. And for red and tap, sacrifice an artifact, return target artifact card with converted mana cost 3 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Again, Goblin Engineer serves two purposes in this deck. Number one, it's a tutor into our graveyard, which is very, very efficient with Osgear as the commander but can also put artifacts into our graveyard from the battlefield and recur some little artifacts back onto the battlefield. Love Goblin Engineer in this deck. Foundry Inspector is 3 generic for a 3-2 artifact construct, and artifact spells you cast cost 1 less to cast. Very generic, very simple. A lot of the spells that we have in here are artifacts, so Foundry Inspector is going to be very efficient in reducing the mana costs and making sure that we are using as much mana as we can. Next up we have Shimmer Mirror for 3 generic, we have a 2-2 Artifact Mirror with Flash, and you may cast Artifact spells as though they had Flash. You all know that Vidalcan Orrery and Leeline of Anticipation are very, very good cards, and Shimmer Mirror is going to give us that ability, but on a 3 mana 2-2 creature. And it's budget, can't get better than that. One of my personal favorites, Scrap Mastery for 3 Red Red, we have a Sorcery, each player exiles all Artifact cards from his or her graveyard, then sacrifices all Artifacts he or she controls then puts all cards he or she exiled this way onto the battlefield. It's essentially living death, but for artifacts. So if you are playing a deck that is full of artifacts, and especially ones where you're trying to get them into the graveyard, then Scrap Mastery can be almost a win con with the amount of value that you are going to get from this card. Mimic Vat is 3 generic for an artifact with imprint. Whenever a non-token creature dies, you may exile that card. If you do, return each other card exiled with Mimic Vat to its owner's graveyard. And for 3 generic and tap, create a token that's a copy of a card exiled with Mimic Vat. It gains haste, exile at the beginning of the next end step. You know what's better than one Mimic Vat? You guessed it. Two Mimic Vats with Osgear's ability. 
make sure that you have the best creature that's going into the graveyard and also the second best creature that goes into the graveyard. Rings of Bright Hearth is 3 generic for an artifact. Whenever you activate an ability, if it isn't a mana ability, you may pay 2 generic. If you do, copy that ability. You may choose new targets for the copy. I am so happy to be able to put Rings of Bright Hearth into this budget upgrade. This card was sitting well above $30 for a long time, and now it's at $5 and it just couldn't make me happier. This card does wonders in this deck for multiple reasons. Number one, we have activated abilities in our deck, but mostly we want to use it with Ozgear. His ability to exile artifacts from graveyards and make token copies of it is an activated ability, so he can pay two generic to get four token copies of the exiled card instead. And later in the game, you can exile Rings of Bright Hearth to make two copies of it, so that you can pay four mana to get six copies of an artifact. Rings of Bright Hearth is a very scary card in many decks, and Ozgear is no exception. Thran Temporal Gateway for four generic is a legendary artifact, and for four generic and tap, you may put a historic permanent card from your hand onto the battlefield. Reminder text, artifacts, legendaries, and sagas are historic. This works very similar to Shimmer Mirror, where it can give our artifact pseudo flash. It also helps us cheat around mana costs by just paying four to put artifacts from our hand onto the battlefield. Next up, we have Mirror Works. For five generic, we have an artifact. Whenever another non-token artifact enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay two generic. If you do, create a token that's a copy of that artifact. So Mirror Works is going to work really well on our deck as long as we're not trying to copy the tokens that we're making off of Ozgear. Because Mirror Works does not work with token artifacts, but non-token artifacts. Still though, I think Mirror Works can make havoc in this deck, so I'm happy to include it. And then rounding us out, we've got two ramp cards. We've got Worn Power Stone, which is three generic for an artifact. Enters the battlefield taps and adds two generic. We also have Dreamstone Hedron, which is six mana for an artifact that adds three generic. And for three generic and tap, sacrifice Dreamstone Hedron and draw three cards. Especially Dreamstone Hedron, which we can make token copies of with Ozgear. It serves both as mana ramp and the potential to draw nine cards off of this one card. But that, my goats, is it for our $20 budget upgrade guide for the Lorehold Legacies deck featuring Ozgear, the Reconstructor. If you want these cards, then feel free to follow the link in the description box below to get these cards from GameGrid. Remember to support your LGSs in this time of need. And let me know in the comment section below what cards you would take out, what cards you would put in, and the budget that you're going to use to upgrade this deck. Super excited for all the commander decks coming out. And next time we will have the Prismari deck upgrade guide with Landon. So stay close and we will be back. Thank you goats and have a nice day.